All right, gentlemen, welcome back to the Lethality Series. I'm your host, Zach Allred, former 175 Ranger, Ranger School graduate, you know, just a guy, just a dude. Uh, but I do know a few things, so that's why I'm here teaching y'all. So today's class is going to be a React Contact and Battle Drill 1 Alpha class. Now, this is like the bread and butter of just about any kind of Ranger class that you're going to get. You're going you're gonna to get a Battle Drill 1 Alpha and a React Contact class probably once a week as a private. So you're either going to be giving the class or you're going to be getting it from a tab or another private, or, you know, maybe your team leader in your squad, if he uh, really wants you to learn it. So I've taken copious amounts of notes on the, on the few different battle drill one alpha classes I've had over the years. So that's what I built this off of. Um, so some stuff might not be like exact to exact to doctrine. Um, it is all doctrinally sound. Um, but different units do things different ways. So um, if your unit does something differently, you know, go along with what they do. If you're new to learning this, this is how Ranger Regiment teaches it and how we uh, how we train it for our live fires and uh, and what have you. So I'm going to make sure I get my uh, my notes open just in case. We're going to launch right into it. I'm going to put a it wouldn't be a Ranger class if, uh, you know, some kind of stimulant wasn't involved. So we got our six milligram citrus zen we're going to throw in here. And let's begin. All right. So first we have to answer the question, what is a battle drill? A battle drill is a collective action rapidly executed without applying a deliberate decision-making process. So what this means basically is that if something happens to a, an element, you know, there's a couple pre-rehearsed different ways that it will go and you pre-rehearse them. So you don't have to, you know, in the, in the thick of the moment, you don't have to communicate to everyone what exactly they're supposed to be doing. Everyone knows it and everyone performs their, their role and their function without being told what to do. Um, you know, collective action, everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing without their team leader or their squad. They're having to tell them what the fuck to do. But there's like, there's like 10 main battle drills. We probably won't ever get to all of them in this series just because, you know, some of the platoon level stuff is a little bit out of the scope of what I'd like to teach and what I feel comfortable teaching. Um, we will talk about battle drill one, which is the full platoon attack. But for right now, we're talking battle drill one alpha and react to contact. All right. So we have react to contact conditions. Element is moving in a squad comm fire team wedge on some kind of patrol. Uh, standard. So the element in contact returns fire immediately and seeks cover. Element in contact locates the enemy and places well-aimed fire on known enemy positions. The leader can point out at least one half of the enemy positions and identify the types of weapons, you know, such as small arms and light machine guns. All right. So I've made some graphics for this. Uh, hopefully they show up all right. Move my head up to here. So we have our, I'll just explain these real quick. So our enemy elements over here in this uh, little bit of a, a copse of trees in the middle of this clearing. And we're approaching basically an open danger area here. Uh, we have our squad here. Team leaders are in red. Our squad leaders in purple. And then the rest of the fire team members are in black circles. So I didn't label them. Um, you know, realistically, this would be your, your machine gunner. And then your machine gunner here, grenadier, grenadier, rifleman, rifleman. Um, this is a, just, you know, a, a basic infantry squad. We're not going to go guns attached or nothing crazy for this. All right. So we're moving along squad column fire team wedge, right? And we take contact from this, this clearing, this copse of trees about 100 meters away. Immediately upon contact, team in contact does three things simultaneously. And this is very important that they're all done simultaneously. Return fire seek cover, and then yell out the three Ds, which are distance, direction, and description. For example, 12 o'clock, 100 meters, enemy in the open. So out of the three of those, the direction is the most important. You don't want to have, you know, a mis mislabeled direction call, six o'clock, you know, for example, and then everyone's turning around thinking they're getting shot at from behind and then, you know, just problems. So this generally your team leader is going to be the one to yell this out first because he's, you know, the point man. He's going to, you know, realize more than likely that it's happening before anyone else. Um, but it's not necessarily his only responsibility. If anyone can yell it out and then the whole entire element is going to echo that so that everyone knows 
exactly where that contact is coming from. And there's no, you know, confusion about that. You're not going to just yell out contact. I mean, there's, there's some TTPs and people out there that'll do like, Oh, contact front contact, rear contact, left contact, right. Uh, that works, but a clock direction is usually a little bit more specific than just left or right or front description. You don't need to be, you know, exact with it. It's just enemy in the open or vehicle in the open vehicle from the rear stuff like that. It doesn't need to be a whole, they're wearing, they're wearing camouflage and there's a PKM and two AKs, you know, nothing crazy like that. So moving on. So that lead team is going to get generally online lazy W utilizing available cover and micro terrain. Um, they don't need to be perfectly online. Obviously, like you're going to be out in the woods. Nothing's in a perfect straight line. So you might have a piece of cover that's a little bit forward of your of uh, the guy to your right or left. That's fine as long as you're not cutting him off. And you want to, you know, generally be spread out, you know, 20 meters or so in between each dude. So Lazy W, utilizing available cover micro terrain IMT. So if you take contact, you're going to generally, if you are close to a piece of cover, you're going to return fire as you're sprinting to that piece of cover. You know, you're not going to be making accurate shots, but you're going to be, you know, engaging the enemy. Um, if you're caught out in the open, you're going to hit the deck immediately and return fire. Um, and for maneuvering to, uh, you know, your next piece of cover, you're going to use an IMT technique. So either low crawl, high crawl, or a uh, three to five second rush, which we haven't talked about, but... We'll talk about it real quick here. Three to five second rush is basically I'm up. He sees me. I'm down. So in the time it takes you to say that is the general time that it takes for someone to acquire you in their sights. So you want to be moving fast. It's a quick, you know, quick, short bounds. Um, so you're getting up from the prone, basically one handed push up with your weapon system and you're sprinting forward for three to five seconds, hopefully to an actual piece of cover. If not, you're going back into the prone. Um, you're going to try and do that while you have covering fire. Not everyone's gonna be trying to IMT at the same time. So if that saw is ripping, you know that you're gonna be able to, to IMT to your to your next piece of cover. Only in, in the case of this, you know, we're gonna talk about individual bounding here um, towards the end of this, but we're talking react contact. So that lead team is gonna engage at a rapid rate of fire. That TL is gonna generally control uh, the rate of fire. So he's gonna say rapid and he's gonna issue fire commands in order to fix the enemy. So he's going to be giving individual instructions to each of the specific weapon system in his squad. Um, and we're going to talk about fire commands here in the next slide. So that squad leader is going to move to where he can assess the situation, um, to where he can kind of see the enemy, but he's not going to become decisively engaged. The last one we want is that squad leader becoming pinned um, pinned down by the enemy because he's the, he's the leader of the element and he's critical to what's going to come next. So he doesn't necessarily go all the way up to that lead team leader. He's going to get to where that lead team, he can communicate with that lead team leader and he's going to be like, Hey, what do you got? And that lead team leader is going to tell him, Hey, you know, there's a machine gun emplacement and another dude or what have you. So what the squad leader and that lead team leader are looking for are the size and strength of the enemy, the type of the enemy weapon systems, the terrain. So where they're at and then looking for, covered and concealed routes, defilades, vulnerable flanks um, that they can potentially attack the enemy from. This is all going into the squad leader's decision making. He's looking for that last covered and concealed position um, on flanks to where he's going to take that Bravo team around to flank. He's going to be looking for where he needs to, to call his shift and lift signal. So, you know, 15 degrees off of that lead team. Um, either the, to the right or to the left in the woods or, you know, at that LCC um, to when it's going to let him know where he needs to send that shift fire signal. So we'll talk about pace plan and shift and lift signals here in a minute. So he's going to communicate all of this to hire. He's going to communicate the element is in contact. He's going to, you know, try and relay as much about the situation as he can in a short amount of time. And that ends react to contact. So React to contact is a is a very quick battle drill, and depending on the uh, type of enemy, is going to dictate what comes next. All right, so here's a here's the pictograph here. So that lead team is engaging. That saw gunner is over here ripping. Uh, team leaders behind this rock. Squad leader is you know moved up to that lead team leader here, um, but he's not you know online. He's not shooting. He's not becoming engaged in the actual fight. 
Um, and then you have here at the back, you have, we're going to talk about this next slide, but you have that, that rear team pulling flank and, uh, and rear security. So Bravo team leader, he's going to be looking and watching the squad leader here and seeing what he is going to decide. So he's, he's watching for him to, uh, to come back and lead his team on whatever flank or whatever kind of battle they're going to be doing next. All right. So we're gonna talk about fire commands real quick. So there's, you know, some elements to a fire command here. So you have your alert, which is going to be 320 gunner or saw gunner, um, weapon or ammunition. So for specifically, you know, for your 320 gunner, he's going to tell what kind of, how many rounds he wants and what type of rounds. So you've got HE, you've got HEDP. Um, those are generally what you're going to be carrying. You've got flash, um, you have smoke as well. Um, but generally you're going to be engaging with HE. You want to fix that enemy and uh, gain fire superiority. And the best way to do that is to utilize your organic weapon systems and organic HE elements or HE weapons. Um, target description. So he's going to, if there's multiple different kind of, uh, if there's like a vehicle, for example, he's going to, hey, two rounds HE on that truck or two rounds HE on the machine gunner. Um, so that's your description. Direction, obviously, is going to be kind of echoing the, uh, the 3Ds from earlier, so 12 o'clock, and then he's going to give him a range if necessary. So that team leader generally has more experience in ranging and in and coming up with ranges on the fly. He's going to in, tell that 320 gunner exactly what range he's got to the target. And then method, which is kind of optional. We never, I never really use this. Um, so left to right or, you know, right to left. That's more maybe for your, uh, your saw gunner. And then execution. So either at will, on my command, um, you know, something like that. Usually it'll be like, Hey, two rounds, HE enemy in the open, 12 o'clock, hundred meters fire at will. So that tells the, the 320 gunner, Hey, just, you know, get that 320 out and start engaging immediately. All right. So after you've reacted to contact, you have really, you have two choices. Um, sometimes three, um, we're going to talk about, we'll talk about them real quick here. So either he initiates battle drill one alpha break contact or bypasses the enemy. Now bypassing the enemy is generally not something you would do. Um, and that's still kind of a little bit more of like your break contact kind of thing. Cause you would still have to do some elements of the break contact to uh, be able to successfully extricate yourself from that contact. So like I mentioned before, Bravo team is holding 270 degree security to the flanks and the rear while that squad leader makes his decision decision. Obviously, they're not going to be, you know, pointing at the back of Alpha team. So, for Battle Drill 1 Alpha, in this situation, the squad leader has decided to uh, to initiate Battle Drill 1 Alpha. Um, note here, we generally wouldn't engage uh, without 3 to 1 odds. So, again, this is going to vary depending on your kind of your situation. Um, but generally, we're looking for at least 3 to 1 odds. So, if there's, you know, a freaking platoon size element that we're engaging there we come in under contact from we're not going to engage them as a squad that's stupid that's suicide like you're gonna your ass is gonna get handed to you if you do that but if it's like a you know like an op or you know just some dudes that's when you can engage with a with a squad size element um so three to one is a general rule of thumb for that all right you got uh, three options for battle drill one alpha. You either going to flank left, flank right, or you're going to do a frontal assault. So there's a couple of enough different naming conventions for this. So options one, two, and three, one being left, two is right, three is up the middle. And then you have California left, New York, right? This is kind of like down to the individual unit and, uh, whatever they've rehearsed as kind of part of this battle drill. Like this is all, again, this is all pre-rehearsed. So the entire team, the entire squad is going to know, uh, option one, option two, option three. So squad leader only has to say option one or two and that, that bounding, that flanking team is going to know where they're going. So squad leader makes that decision and communicates it to his TL. So he's going to tell that alpha team leader, Hey, option two in the in scenario we're talking about, we're going to do, we're going to do option two because we'll, we'll, we'll show you here in the slides. Um, but he communicates that to both of his TLs. So that squad leader is going to lead Bravo team in a bold flanking maneuver. So they're generally going to go back, you know, out of sight and out of, out of range of that, uh, enemy element 
in whatever direction he picks. So they're going to go back and then to the right or left. In our case, he's going to be going right. Um, ideally, you want to be in some kind of death laid or maneuvering through an area that's going to give you a decent amount of cover. And that squad leader, since he had SA and he had eyes on uh, exactly where he wants to lead the flank to or lead that flanking team to, he's going to lead Bravo team to that uh, LCC. All right, so situation here, Alpha team has the fight. They are the base of fire. That squad leader, he saw, hey, there's cover around to the right here where we can effectively, you know, get back and flank around to where these guys probably won't be able to see us. And we're going to go up to here. So he's leading them out. Generally, you're going to be obviously in like some kind of wedge or staggered column or file if it's really, really dense shit. But again, you're going to be using one of those uh, formations that we've talked about in previous lethality series um, episode. Yeah. Episode three of lethality series. So if you haven't watched that, go back and, and watch, review that real quick. So once Bravo team is at the LCC, they're going to engage the enemy at a rapid rate of fire to signal to alpha team that they have the fight. Uh, squad leader is going to give the ATL the shift fire signal. So we're going to be talking about pace plan here real quick. And then the ATL is going to shift his element 15 degrees off of the objective in the opposite direction of Bravo team. And they're firing at known, likely, and suspected enemy positions. So you've got this, uh, the enemy element in a, in a crossfire here. Um, and then he's going to confirm that ship via pace plan. So pace stands for primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency. So what that would be like for, in this case, your primary would be maybe radio, your alternate's going to be some kind of visual, um, some kind of visual marking. So either a, a starburst flare, a flare, um, you've got ninja stars, you've got flaming rocks, you've got lasers. Lasers can be, uh, can be part of your pace plan. Uh, contingencies can be visual or auditory. So like a whistle, um, I just know from experience that whistles can be kind of hard to hear over the din of a firefight. And then you have your emergency, which can be a runner. So that a rifleman or a, a dude from, uh, the flanking team is going to go around and he's going to go back to alpha team and be like, Hey, we're at the LCC shift fire. And that's, if your comms are down, you're not using comms. Um, and if that alpha team did not respond to the visual signals, Generally, we would try and use at least two. So we would do radio call and then immediately follow it up with a flare. Flares are the best. Um, there's a lot of options out there, military side as well as the civilian side, which I'm, I'm going to make a video on, ideally, hope, hopefully sometime in the future, um, once I get some actual uh, physical material to kind of go over uh, what kind of options you got out there. All right, so we've zoomed in a little bit here. We've got Alpha Team here, or Bravo Team rather, in the LCC. They've picked it up. They've got the fight. They're engaging the enemy in this copse of trees. That squad leader is in a position to where he can observe Alpha Team and Bravo Team. And they're picking up the fight here with, uh, with Bravo Team. So squad leader signals the shift fire with, uh, with flare and radio in this case. And that... Alpha team leader is going to go around and make sure his guys are shifted off 15 degrees off the objective. These lines aren't exact, um, but they're still, they're firing known, likely and suspected. And he's going to go to each individual dude and make sure that they're shifted 15 degrees off. He's going to give right and left limits to, uh, to his men. So once that shift fire is confirmed, Bravo team is going to begin their assault. Once Bravo team starts moving and once they're off 15 degrees off the objective the alpha team is going to shift an additional 15 degrees and lift fire um you can signal this uh it's generally advised to signal this in some cases you won't um but they're going to go either into a watch and shoot or a lift fire where they're going to be shooting you know above the heads and like into the into the sky basically we didn't ever really do that um it wasn't ever something that we we did. Um, I know that there's some units out there that preach lift fire to where you're literally lifting 
your fire above the heads of known likely and suspected and continuing shooting to make it sound like you were, uh, you're shooting at them. Um, kind of, I think it's kind of silly in my opinion, but that is a, a piece of doctrine there that your, uh, your unit might have you do. So, so Bravo team is now going to start bounding across and through the objective and their individual movement technique is going to be dependent on the a level of effective fire by the enemy. If they're still, you know, still alive and kicking and, and returning fire, you're going to be bounding by ones. Um, you can bound by ones, you can bound by twos as a team, and the team leader is going to make that call. So he's going to say, hey, bound by ones on me. And that whole team is going to echo, bound by ones on you. So team leader is going to make that first bound, and then that saw gunner is going to bound next, and then they're going to be the grenadier, and then the rifleman, generally in that order. Ones is, is definitely preferred just because it gives that uh, that dude, whoever whoever is IMTing or bounding, it's going to give him the most, uh, most cover fire. So Alpha team here shifted entirely off the objective. They're in a watch and shoot. They're kind of watching out over here to see if there's any, you know, make sure that there's no enemy maneuvering out over in this direction. And they're just in a watch and shoot with M4s only. Um, that, that saw, uh, is going to kind of just going to hold what he's got. And that squally is going to bound with him either online, uh, or he's going to bound behind, behind his team. So as Bravo team assaults through, they're going to put two rounds on the head of any downed enemy and kick that weapon away from the body. Make sure he's dead, you know, dead checks. So. Once you are assaulting through, and if you go back, you cannot, it's a war crime to go back and, you know, shoot someone again after you've already cleared through them. Um, so that's an, it's important to make sure that they're dead before you get through. Uh, once they're through, they're going to establish their limit of advance or LOA, 35 meters away from the last body, uh, 35 meters being the hand grenade range distance. Um, or common sense. Like if there's a, a good piece of cover that's a little bit further away, uh, you're going to go there. Or if it's like on the side of a fucking cliff or something, if you're, uh, you're going to obviously not going to want to go down the, the side of that cliff. Very dependent on the terrain, but generally 35 meters away. Once they're there, uh, Again, Alpha Team is observing all this, and that Alpha Team leader, once he sees that they're at their LOA, and or the squad leader communicates, hey, LOA, LOA, via radio or yelling, that Alpha Team is going to pick up, and they're going to either bound through the objective, or they're going to get online, and they're going to walk through um, if there's not any more fire being taken. So he can walk them through, he can bound them by ones if the situation dictates, or he can bound them by twos. So as they move through the objective, they're also going to put two more rounds into the fighters, into the enemy, uh, and then they're going to actually unload and clear the enemy weapons, and then they're going to establish that other leg of the LOA. We're going to show you here what that looks like. So in our case, there's three dudes. Bravo team has uh, made sure that they're all dead, and they're moving through the LOA. Alpha team is still in their watch and shoot. And they're kicking the enemy weapons away and making sure that the enemy is dead. They're at their LOA here, so they're online. That alpha team leader's here. Squad leader's kind of near the what's going to become the apex. And he communicates back to uh, alpha team that they're in their LOA. And then alpha team is going to bound or get online and walk through the objective, clearing the enemy weapons and establishing that other leg of the LOA. So at the LOA, first thing that's going to happen is the team leaders are going to get a lace report from the team members individually. He's going to go up to each individual member as they're in their, uh, behind their piece of cover or whatever, pulling security. And he's going to check their liquids, their ammo. He's going to make sure none of them are hit and he's going to make sure that everyone has their equipment. So he's, he's physically checking because in the heat of the moment, you might've, you might've been clipped by something. You might've been clipped by a round or have been shot and because you have so much adrenaline going through you, you might not notice it. Uh, it's, it's very possible. So he's going to physically check and, you know, do a little bit of a blood sweep or, you know, he's going to feel and make sure that his, uh, his dudes are all good. 
each uh, member is going to be like, hey, I've got like three mags left. I'm good on water. I've still got, you know, full camelback, full canteen, whatever. Um, I've got my my weapons. The team leader is going to physically check, make sure he's got his optic, his laser, his tack light, uh, sidearms, nods, any kind of pertinent piece of equipment that that team member is carrying. And then simultaneously to the laser ports, security is being redistributed. So the saws are going to be moving to the apexes. We're going to go back here. So you're going to want to generally have a saw at the apex here. So this might be a Bravo team saw. And then over here is going to be maybe alpha team saw just to distribute those fires. And then your 320 gunners are going to be moved to cover any kind of deflating or deflates rather. And then you're going to redistribute ammo. So alpha team has burned through a decent amount of ammo here. Um, we didn't really talk about what they're doing at that, uh, at that base of fire, but after that rapid in fire engagement at the beginning, they're going to go into some kind of sustained rate of fire. So we kind of talked about this in the, uh, the machine gun theory class. So go back and watch that. It's a little different for, uh, for like a, a rifle team. Um, so the machine gunner obviously is going to follow the, uh, the sustained rate of fire for his saw, his whatever his weapon system is. And then for a uh, rifleman, your sustained rate of fire is still two to three rounds every three to five seconds. So it's going to start at one end. So that rifleman on the end is going to be engaging. And then three to five seconds later, the next guy in the line and then the team leader, if the team leader is not moving around and making sure his guys are shifted, and then that uh, grenadier or rifleman on the other end, and they're going to be going. They have to keep that fight up the whole time while Bravo team is maneuvering. So if it's a long flank, they really have to be careful about their ammo conservation. Um, again, it depends on how much, how many mags you're carrying. Uh, and that team leader has to make sure that his guys don't run out before they do their their shift fire with uh with bravo team that first shift fire before they go into their watch and shoot once 360 degree security is established that squad leader is going to send a clear team and that's generally going to consist of a team leader and a rifleman just because the rifleman is uh, not going to be encumbered by a machine gun and they're not taking those uh critical weapon systems off of the off of the loa so that clear team is going to ensure the enemy weapons are cleared and ensure that the enemy aren't lying on prime grenades. Uh, that's a class that I might do. Um, you're essentially going to roll. If they're like lying face down or lying on their back, you're going to roll them over to make sure they're not lying on a grenade uh, that could go off and, uh, and kill someone during the search. So you either get on top of that body and you roll them over while that team leader checks underneath. If there's a grenade, that dude's going to freaking dump that body back on top of it. To absorb the blast and that team leader is going to freaking get out of the way um so assuming that you know there wasn't any prime grenades or dudes laying on grenades there that clear team is going to double as a search team um got to have ourselves here so once those buys are cleared this is when you're going to call on your agent leader teams either for the enemy casualties if for whatever reason they're not freaking dead after you know being engaged uh or for any friendly casualties, but the clear team has to make sure that that objective is secure and clear before you send in any kind of aid and litter. So that clear team is also going to double as a search team. And what they're looking for is dependent on what the commander's uh, intelligence requirements are. So, you know, it might be like cell phones, documents, IDs you're looking for and documenting Weapon serial numbers, because you can report that to hire and Intel can do stuff with that. Uh, you know, radios, you're looking for frequencies, stuff like that. That's all important intelligence information that you can garner and gain from dead enemy. And once once all this is done, that squad leader is going to communicate their status to the higher, higher element. So, hey, like, we are... This is our, he's going to essentially send the, the cumulative lace report um, and take direction from higher. Clear team gathers any important material and then either disables the weapon systems by removing bolts, breaking them, bending the barrels, 
or prepping them to uh, to blow in place if they've got some kind of demolition. Um, you're generally not going to take those weapons with you. Uh, not really any need to. Again, entirely dependent on the type of situation. If you're a grill element, you might need those weapons, so you're not going to you know disable them permanently. But in our case, we're talking you know strictly U.S. doctrine here. You know, crummy AKs or whatever. You're going to take out the bolt if you don't have any uh, demolition to blow them. And you're either going to huck it into the woods, into a ravine, or take the bolt with you and ditch it on ditch it on your way. Just something to make sure that those weapons couldn't be picked up later and uh, easily reused. You're going to try and make it hard for the enemy and deny them those weapon systems. So talking specifically Ranger School... Um, and generally just in Darby is when you're going to have a designated demo team. Um, and that demo team can either be that clear team or it can be another two individuals from the, uh, from your squad. So if you have any casualties after those are treated and prepped to move like on a litter or a Skedco squad leader communicates to hire, um, figures out what they want them to do and they're going to continue mission. If they're, you know, black on ammo, they're going to need to figure out some kind of resupply or, you know, head back to uh, wherever they were patrolling out of. Um, and then they're going to move a minimum of a thousand meters away or a key terrain feature away because you were just in a huge firefight and it's going to attract a lot of attention to that area. So you don't want to be there for very long. This all happens very quick. Like you don't want to be at that LOA on that objective for longer than you need to be. There's not really a, I'm sure there is somewhere in doctrine that tells you exactly how many minutes you need to be, but you're generally going to know like enemy reinforcement time. They may have, you know, called in reinforcements as you were engaging them. Um, and you don't want to be there when they show up. So this really concludes the class really kind of down and dirty. Um, any Rangers that ended up watching this, let me know if I missed anything in the comments down below. Um, you guys helped me out a few times um, in the past, so appreciate it um, if there was anything critical that I absolutely missed, but pretty sure I covered it all. Um, again, you know, you're, you're, if you're in the Army, your unit might teach you something different, you know, go off of what they say, unless it's really stupid, and then you can maybe show them this class and be like, hey, like, this is what regiment does, whatever. Um, but hopefully this was instructional to y'all, and I hope that it... uh hope that it opened your eyes to a, a critical critical battle drill that everyone should know uh, super basic it's it's literally just a a flank you know a flanking maneuver one of the most basic elements in warfare but that's it have a good one